Welcome back, loyal minions, and we are happy to bring you another installment of the Hail Ming Power Hour, uh, another movie from our past and your future, hopefully, um, because it's a doozy, I'll tell you that much. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you've stuck with us this long, so we're not going to steer you wrong. All right. Welcome back. So, um, as usual, I am Danny Bennett, and I'm here with my brother from another mother, Rick Morgan. What up? What up? Yo, yo, yo! We are excited to talk to you about a, a scary um, blob face guy who's right. behind Rick right now. Ah! <laughs> He's sneaking up on you. <laughs> I just wanted to... Pretorious. Yeah, for, for the people that haven't seen this movie and you're watching the YouTube video, I just kind of want to give you a shot, and we will talk about the effects in this movie. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> but welcome back to the S-H-O-E show. <laughs> and also, we don't, we no longer have an, an also special guest. No. Nope. That was last time. And, uh, you know, we love having Gary on board, but now it's just the two of us. And That's we right. are ready to talk about 1986's from beyond yeah so or hp lovecraft's from beyond there you go there you go so or this is charles this band is the from <laughs> charles band richard band they're all involved it's a whole band oh, of man bands. they're all involved yes they are and, and really that's what this movie is is trying to capture that lightning in the bottle that came off of reanimator into another movie and man, i'll tell you what they almost did it <laughs> they did something Yes, they did. I I am a huge fan of this movie. I remember the first time I saw it. You know, it didn't take long to realize that it was the same people behind Reanimator. It just it just looked like it, felt like it. The story even moves along like Reanimator. Of course, it's H.P. Lovecraft. So Brian and, using and the I, you know. I kind of like the three act deal that they had going with it. It it was concise. Yeah. And although I think it could have been even more concise, it, it was it was appreciated that it that it kept moving. Yeah. So if you don't know about this movie and you like Reanimator, I, I mean, hopefully by the time we get through this conversation, you're literally going to go out. It's on Tubi, folks. You can go check it out on Tubi. It's, it's true. It's it's yeah. uh, at least for now, you know, as of the publishing of this podcast it is for free on tubi just as sure i as, watched it just as sure as pretorius is behind me it's on tubi <laughs> he's he's a little distracting back there it's pretu pr pretubious he's pretuberous <laughs> it's the pretuberous third eye yes uh so again uh you've got jeffrey combs in this need i say more <laughs> that's that's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> you got jeffrey, jeffrey combs, combs in here can't go wrong he's, with him He's my first reason. Yeah. Okay. Well, let, I tell you, let's just jump into it. What's your first reason? Jump into it. It's so, Rick, what is your first reason to watch H.P. Lovecraft's Charles Band's uh, 1986's From Beyond? I got to go with just the overall effects of this movie. I mean, that's a cheap thing to say, but man, I mean, as good as reanimator is this thing it, it's it's borderline it, it's like reanimator and taking the effects from the thing and the blob and mixing all three of them together yeah so i, I can't disagree up. i i like the evil eels that show up yes you know, like the yes you know, when the resonator gets going yep you turn um, on this resonator and it opens up dimensions it it, it makes your uh pineal gland grow bigger in your head and you can see through the fourth wall or whatever you want to say here. It's another dimension you're seeing. <laughs> your old gland. That's right. <laughs> and uh, during this process, whatever is in the other, you know, dimension can also see you. And right. that's how this whole story evolves. It, it's, you know, that's that Lovecraftian thing going on here. Uh, yeah, man, these effects to me, I, I put them up against almost anything as far as no, just overall fix no argument here i mean you know especially for the time the practical effects it was the dedication to the effects because you know it wasn't just a matter of doing them the people making them had to say we're going all in on this right i mean look, look behind me here 
I mean, look at this guy. That's insane. There's no doubt that Slither, when they made Slither, they kind of took this idea right here. Oh, well, I'll get to talking about some of the 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 possible inspirations that I saw when I was when I was watching this, because because I I have a feeling there's there's something, you know, if nothing else, then then we're maybe inspired by the HP Lovecraft original story. But even this movie coming out influenced some movies that came out just a year yep. later. Sure, sure. I think I know where you're heading right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So my you're first gonna... reason. Yes. Is Jeffrey Combs. Absolutely. I mean, nobody plays just just batshit crazy. <laughs> Absolutely right, man. Nobody plays uh, that particular kind of manic the yeah, way that yeah. Jeffrey Combs does. Yeah. He, he, uh, and then this, just, oh, and he, I mean, he is just over the top, but I love him for it. Favorite line in the movie bit off his head like a gingerbread man. Like a gingerbread man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I watched that once and then I, I watched it a second time and somebody was in the room and I was kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible line, but he sells it. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the thing is, you know, he's, he's in it to win it, man. He, yeah. he read the script, he knows his part and he's doing it. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, man, Jeffrey Combs. I mean, Jeffrey what Combs. can you say? Everything he's in, we're going to watch. It's just, it's just a given. And I would like for anyone out there, I challenge you to um, to see what I see, and that Jeffrey Combs is like Robert Hayes's evil twin, man. Ah, yeah. you look at them side by side. I mean, like if they're not related, then they were they aren't related. So I'm not going to eat anything. But they look a lot alike. So what did you think about when we met Jeffrey Combs that time? I mean, super nice guy. I, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's he. I think he got it. I think he's a more trained actor than what we're used to seeing when yes. we go to these things. And that's kind of what I, what, what, what stuck out for me was that he yeah. seemed very theatrically adept. Right. But he's not giving you the eye roll of, Oh Lord, why am I here? You know, he's no Billy Zane, <laughs> but at the same time, I, I thought he was very cool and yeah, approachable. Yeah, and well, and, and um, oh man, I've, I've seen a lot of posts for him recently because of the recent Hellraiser that yeah. came out, but um, I'm blanking on his name. The guy who plays Pinhead. Um, he uh, 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 goes Gary Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a Davis. different one. Brandley what you Davis. talking about? <laughs> he, um, I mean, and, and uh, I've talked to several people who met with, with uh, that actor and yeah. He kind of has the attitude that I'm glad that Jeffrey Combs didn't have. Right. Well, he is British, so that kind of gives you that thing, too. I, I got to talk to him once, and it was very, yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, you know, you, you made a good point when you talked about Tom Savini. You know, you, you meet a lot of people who might make you kind of regret some of the, the things you did because of the things that they focus on. Yeah. And maybe he's dealt with that quite a bit. And again, uh, you, you don't know what you're going to get coming up to your table. So the person in front could have totally ticked them off and they become a different person. I mean, they're sure. human just like everybody else. But anyways, uh, since you, you got Jeffrey Combs, I, I'm just going to say in general, this cast, the three amigos here, man, Jeffrey Combs, Barbara Crampton, again. Barbara Crampton. Al always fantastic. Pretty smoking hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Ken Foray, man. I mean, Bubba. Bubba. And, you know, from, from the original Dawn of the Dead. I mean, it's Ken Foray, folks. And if you haven't seen this movie, and I've just mentioned these three names, that alone should make you go check this movie out. Uh, they work great together, man. It's it's fun. It's fun. Ken Foray, yeah, he's super yeah. fun in this. You know, oh, I used to play football. We're all <laughs> crazy. He's just... Um, <laughs> He's he's over the top. Just he he plays right in, you know. He's, he's running around, running around in his underwear, you board. know. <laughs> even has a he even wears the jersey, you know, from back when he played football or whatever. So <laughs> I, I noticed that I I might have even written it down in my notes. It's like in case you forgot, he said he played football. 
It's like, oh, here I am in my football jersey. Uh, you guys ready to go? <laughs> but he's got that chest gun holster, too, that he wears over it. It's just like, uh... <laughs> Anyways, what a decision. But yeah, man, this this cast... And again, you got Stuart Gordon, you got Stuart Gordon's wife, that's the nurse in this, or the doctor that gives Barbara Crampton such a hard time. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Nurse Ratchet. <laughs> nurse Ratchet. <laughs> yeah, close. That's, that's, so, that's totally what I got to call her. Right, like, right. She wasn't wrong, though. Right. She was, right. She right. was, um, she was a, you know, female dog about it, but she, um, she wasn't wrong when it right. came to talking about, you know, what Barbara Crampton was doing. Yeah. I'm surprised, you know, what kind of movie had been if she would have, instead of gotten Jeffrey Combs out of the insane asylum and took the dude as in there whacking off, <laughs> we'd have a whole different from beyond. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I guess as long as he was around Barbara Crampton, yeah. there, was, there was a bit of that going on. All right, man, what you got? I, I just have to point out to all those who might be watching, look out for fake windows. Oh God. Yes. There's so many scenes where people are like gazing out of windows or like there are windows on the side of walls. And it's like, Oh, that's, that's not a real window. <laughs> How many times can you blow out those same windows? <laughs> it's like they break the glass in them, but they're going to break the glass again. Same windows. <laughs> it's just an effect, okay. man. You have to sure, have a man. window break it. <laughs> it, to their credit at least it wasn't the same scene of the window breaking right it, it was Good a point. different scene yeah it's like they didn't even worry about trying to fix the glass right. it was already broke but it's gonna break again <laughs> i mean somebody came by and fixed it up you know they're gonna resell the house it's a it's a good neighborhood they oh man they didn't remove all those wires but you know still that whole opening scene where, where the neighbor's dog goes up there and she runs up after the dog and how about when she gets upstairs and the ax comes through the door and she's running down the stairs and Jeffrey Combs outruns her down the stairs to get away. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. All right. So you got broken windows. I'm going to talk about Stuart Gordon for a minute, the director of this movie. Okay. Again, lightning in a bottle. Stuart Gordon. I like a lot of his work. I'm going to give you some examples because we know that he did reanimator. We know he did this movie from beyond, but he also did dolls. You ever seen dolls? Yeah. That's, that's a good one. Castle freak, which was kind of popular back in the day. He did Dagon, which is a pretty good. I know Dagon or yeah. you know, it's Dagon, right? It, yeah. And it could be Dagon. Here's, here's where we throw the wrench in. He did fortress that had Christopher Lambert in it. That's a weird one. Yeah. And but it's, it's a, it's a it's a detachment from this yeah. string of things. Oh, you want a detachment? How about it's he also? Good. <laughs> I kind of liked it back in the day. I'd probably watch it again and be like, yeah, forget it. But again. It's also the... Christopher Lambert, who I love, <laughs> but can be in some stinkers. Can make some stinkers. Yeah. Has, has made some stinkers. Yeah. Uh, and robot jocks. <laughs> what yeah Stuart gordon directed robot jocks yeah it makes sense <laughs> now that i think about robot jocks it makes sense yeah man so Stuart gordon up in the annies here <laughs> he's um he's a workhorse he's not well, albert pune well i thought that, you know it's funny when i started putting that together it's like it's kind of like how we like albert right he's like I, 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 I never hit one over the fence but I hit that wall a lot of times. <laughs> That's right. I mean, like, and it's hard for me to like, you know, bag on Charles Band too much because I, I still have a real soft spot for the Eliminators. You know, yeah, like, it's just some hokey movie making, man. Yeah, it's 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 good fun. But let me tell you, if you walk into From Beyond looking for some good fun realize that there's a lot of stuff that's unfun in it <laughs> yeah yeah very much and again that's that reanimator counterpart right you can have fun with the reanimator after seeing it a bunch of times and you kind of dumb down the the effects and stuff this one's the same way man because it's uh let's just say this movie's kind of gropey <laughs> yeah you know i i feel like i liked reanimator better than from beyond well but a lot of people do. i think from beyond's a better movie i that's kind of my argument it's kind of yeah. my argument. Yeah, yeah. This one feels like it's put together better than Reanimator. I, I, I feel, you know, I, I agree with that. 
but I kind of enjoyed Reanimator more, sure. maybe because it wasn't trying to be as serious. It's it's a bona fide classic, right? But this one, this one's got a CD underbelly about it that uh, you know it kind of messes with you a little bit. Well, not to say that Reanimator does it, because you get the whole you know strapping Barbara Crampton down on the table scene. This is well, you know it's not like they did any less strapping Barbara Crampton down in this movie. Uh, that's very true. So all right, let's get back on track. What back you got? On track. What you got next? All right. Well, just when you think From Beyond is 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 a more serious film, you you notice the address of the uh, of Doctor <laughs> Pretorius's house slash laboratory, and that's six 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 Benevolent Lane. <laughs> yes. Um. You know, I I I I like the little nods to stuff. It's a little heavy handed at times. Yeah. I'm. And this, I'll just, I'll just take this moment to interject. It was at this time that I started to notice some really, you know, when they, when they reinvestigate the house and they see the, the bondage tapes that uh, Dr. Pretorius had yeah. where he was abusing women to, you know, to, to find the next level the of next pleasure level. and pain. Right. That I was like, when did this come out? And when did Hellraiser come out? Exactly. Yep. And it came out a year before the first Hellraiser. Yeah. And you know, although it's based on Clyde Barker's novel, right, the the Hellbound Heart. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking there might be a HP Lovecraft, Clyde Barker, Stuart Gordon, yeah, Clive Barker thing going on here where he was like, Oh, you know, I could make the Hellbound Heart and it could kind of follow this pattern. I who knows it happen, yeah. it very well could have. Very, very similar in, in the the ways of you know the the pleasures of, of normal flesh just isn't enough anymore you know where do we take this so reaching to the next plane yeah. to find some you know yeah so yeah yeah he's player. a lot like uncle frank for sure yeah so it's your uncle frank <laughs> kind of a similar grotesquery too you know yes. uncle frank is skinless and and grotesque much like dr pretorius comes back but frank is a tortured soul where this guy's like I'm the bomb now. I can do anything I want. <laughs> it's kind of like since they didn't have Cenobites, he's also the Cenobites. Yeah, he's everything rolled into one. So, yeah, man, uh, this this movie's got a dark side to it for sure, man. And yeah, yeah. the The whole you know video collection, his bars hanging from the ceiling, his you know bondage stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, pretty messed up, dude. But. According to Jeffrey Combs, he was a genius. Jeffrey Combs had a lot to say about his ex-employer. You know, yeah. he also sat on the other side of the wall and listened to the the uh, sadomasochism <laughs> going on every night. <laughs> oh man! So where are we at? I forgot where we are. I, I just I just did the benevolent lane and the Hellraiser connection. Yeah. So it's on you now. Uh how about when the portal starts kind of working on its own on and they've you know the wires go running all the way down into the basement and they go down there and there's that slug creature that's down there it's like something I, that conan would fight but when its face opens up it looks just like the the creatures from stranger things you know i i have down here i have Bubba says, what is that? And my response to him would have to be, that's got to be the rest of the budget, right? <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, it's, it's wicked. It's a giant worm in the basement and it's, it's, you know, it's about knee deep in water and it looks great. It does. And it the, looks the, great. The head expands just like those creatures when their mouth would open up on, on stranger things. It's just right. a lot bigger. And the fact that it picks up Jeffrey Combs and removes it, it it, it it removes every hair off of his body, yep. eyebrows, hair, facial hair, body hair, everywhere hair. It's just again, it's just one of those freaky things. Is like you don't know where this movie's gonna go. <laughs> and you know, I'm I'm sure that um, I'm not sure that, but you know, you you can extrapolate that. You know, when when people go through traumatic stuff they'll lose the color in their hair and it's, it's the, the body is trying to reroute resources to save 
Right. You know, it's a survival thing. Right. You know, it could just be even that. It's like it's not worth having any hair at all. You know, that's a and neat idea. It's kind of a psychological trauma. Sure. Thing and and the, the hair's the first to go. But also, <laughs> there's the pineal gland. You know. Right. And you know, the doctor is you know stimulating his pineal gland every night. Every Show night. Up. Every night. <laughs> Oh man. But yeah, man, just that I think that creature again, the the effects in this movie are just I, if for the time just mind bending. You know, like I said, they they pulled out all the stops when they made these creatures and yep. and I and I, I my hats off to them, but it's gross. Yeah. And I see where cuz you get towards the end and there's the big inner battle that kind of happens between Pretorius and Jeffrey Combs and it starts turning into just a big bowl of gelatin. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's another movie that Yuzna did, which is the guy that was behind all this, produced it, called Society, which is very well known for its crazy effects too. And it's very similar to that kind of stuff that's in Society. Uh, so this was like the beginning for branching out and using that in other areas. So, um, yeah, man, that's <laughs> it just gets really nasty. <laughs> Uh, where are you at? Um, the next thing I've got is extra dimensional rape. Yeah. Yeah. With I long mean, pointed case, fingers. In case I haven't warned you enough, there's some disgusting effects. And there's also a lot of real lascivious monsterdom where, you know, Dr. Pretorius is Barbara Crampton is just kind of an object of everyone's desire. And it gets real rapey. <laughs> you know it's it's kind of like have you seen the 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 everlong video you know with yep. uh, with the that, blue fighters and he looks at his hand, hand and his hand gets all big yeah the, the, yeah dr Pretoria, his fingers just get real long does the exact same like, thing oh let me he, and it's like no he rips her he rips her gown down and then he looks at his hand and it starts growing and then he starts running his hand down her body yeah it's crazy <laughs> you know all we need is civil shepherd you know to <laughs> Be, or Sybil Danning, Sybil, like Sybil Shepherd, Shepherd might be involved somehow, but I meant Sybil Danning from like you know, yeah, uh, Howling too. Yes, yes, with the shirt rip, shirt ripper, right? The shirt ripping. <laughs> um, now, as far as I know, Sybil Danning has never engaged in that kind of shirt ripping. You never know, but just saying, <laughs> maybe. Uh, I really don't have any other things wrote down but i can talk about this movie forever man the just just the absolute craziness a lot of it doesn't make any sense but it doesn't have to because it's it's almost like a fulci kind of movie where now this happens so why is that i don't know it just does why all of a sudden do they turn on the resonator and it's like a swarm of some kind of evil flesh-eating flies start attacking them and then ken furry has the flashlight, so he's trying to direct them somewhere else, and he throws the flashlight, and it points right back at him, and they all get on him, and they just eat him, eat everything but his face. And, you know, I was thinking during that scene, I was like, of course the bugs will eat him down to the bone because he's no longer necessary as a character. Right, right. It's Other than you to go. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's like, it's almost like <laughs> in major pain, right? Bubba come crawling out the back. Little man, baby boy, both legs missing. He said, Major, I can't feel my legs. I looked down there and them two bloody enough just to kick it. <laughs> I mean, it just goes through my mind every time I watch this scene because you got that leg that's propped up and it's kind of moving and the arms are going, ah, ah. You know, I, I thought of, um, I thought of Mr. Show. Where oh, the, yes, uh, where the yes. The band has, you know, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's David Cross and it's just his head and his little, little, little weenie little man body. body. <laughs> You know, he's like, and they they uh, they write the song to encourage him to jump straight in next time. And so that, yeah, that, that's what I thought of because it's just Ken Froy's head, oh, and, uh, like the body. Mister Show, man. <laughs> oh, that's some that's some gold right there, man. <laughs> my my next observation was Nurse Ratchet is hateable, but she ain't wrong. But she ain't wrong. She's kind of on the money, right? And Barbara Crampton's like. Well, and then this happened, and she's like, "Yeah, well, I told you not to take him." I mean, she wasn't right about about uh, you know Doctor Pen, Doctor Tellingast either. She right. wasn't right about him being just crazy, but 
she did tell her not to go do this and yeah. uh she wasn't wrong yeah i mean barbara's got a chip on her shoulder because she's lost a parent to alzheimer's i guess it was and she's researching how do you change that and that kind of leads her down this path to all this bizarre stuff so right but she will pull people out and run their own test on them to kind of see what happens and just try to capture the data i guess it's a it's a wild setup since we're talking about the nurse though come on man when when hairless jeffrey combs is running around with his forehead all budged out and he's got his pineal gland sticking out and he literally grabs that nurse and sucks out her eyeball and I, I'm imagining that he's just sucking her brain out of her head. Yeah, yeah. They they established that he's after brains. Yeah, because um, he's eating the one out of the jar or the bucket on the floor. These yeah, are delicious. <laughs> and she's like, "Hey, you know, those, we're gonna walk make in you the hall." And he's like, "Oh, what was I doing?" And then the pineal gland sticks out again. He becomes, you know, monster combs and yeah, starts sucking her brain out her eye socket, which yeah. is horrifying. It is. Horrible. It is. So there's a scene where, not a scene, but I've seen a picture where it's two shots from the movie. And it's a shot of, of Pretorius messing with Barbara Crampton, like we talked about, with the long hand. But yeah. then there's also a shot of, well, actually, it's where he's licking her face. He's got her held, you know, he's got, got his big hand on her and he's holding Barbara Crampton. And he's like licking the side of her face. But then there's another picture of Jeffrey Combs doing the eyeball thing to her. And it's almost like, wow, it's almost like they're becoming the same person. Cause they're doing the same thing right so pretty cool to see that you know but uh yeah man uh jeffrey once once his once that gland pops out you know how it is when your glands get get big yeah you gotta you gotta, you gotta roll um, you gotta stimulate <laughs> that pineal gland right. there so somehow they all end up at the hospital but then they all escape back to the house to the house yeah to, to put to put a, a, a wrap it up in a bow in this thing right well to, to put a stop to the resonator right like that right. you know she barbara crampton puts a bomb on it and she's like no we have to get out of here the bomb's gonna explode you know and yeah and he's Ooh, like you, i love you <laughs> yeah we should be together forever we where forgot we forgot where she has her moment right where, where she, she puts on all the the S and M gear and her 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 pineal gland is growing as well and she goes and gets decked out, and Jeffrey Combs is laying here. He's had the worst night of his life. All of his hair is falling out. His body is like rosacea all over. It's raw. Yeah. And she climbs up on him and starts doing the dry hump. <laughs> and you know, and then then uh, Ken Frey shows up. It's right before everybody gets you know before right. all the the flies eat them up but right yeah yeah i mean it's it's the influence of the resonator right it's the um yeah. it's the dimensional pleasures or whatever yeah weird but yeah so i mean the, the, this movie we're telling everything out of context and out of order but all this stuff is in the movie that we're not missing anything no no <laughs> so you know um i think i've got you know Oh, and then, uh, and then, of course, Doctor Tellingast puts uh, uh, Barbara Crampton in the in the S and M shackles, and he's like, "I love you, and we should be together." And right, and his pineal gland comes out, and, and she, uh, she bites off his gland. She bites off his gland. Yeah, man, but it, it kind of snaps him back to normal. Right, and, and they it, team it up. They become a traveling band. <laughs> <laughs> they go upstairs and they've finally try to do away with the resonator, which now is running on its own because yeah. Pretorius is so strong. He can make electrical wires that are no longer connected, just go back together. And he's running this right. show. It becomes alternating current, you know, like the, the uh, electricity yeah. just travels through the air and connect reconnects the cables. Um, That's some eighties technology for you there. Yeah. There was some rotoscoped electricity there for sure. Yeah. Um, and then uh, they, you know, they, they go up to, to take out Dr. Pretorius and he's like, you had to do all that because you were impotent. You know, and he makes him chase him. <laughs> it's like, it's like basket case, man. This thing chasing him. You just see the arms hey, going. Ironically, Pretorius is in basket case part two. Doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> How about uh, 
how about all the forms that Praetorius takes in this, right? Because he comes out the first time and he's totally human looking, but you know, Jeffrey Combs comes out and touches him and his it's his yeah. shoulder just melts. But then he does the large marge face thing, right? That yeah. is wild. And then he comes out and he's the the big creature with the long neck and his head suspended like this, like a snake. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, kind of like Evil Dead, kind of like uh, very, the from the very Stellar. much, yeah. yeah. That, that's another thing you probably was going to bring up, right? I, I wasn't, but now that you pointed out, <laughs> yeah, I, I certainly see it. So this is this is before Evil Dead Two. Just saying, right? Evil that's Dead Two is eighty seven. This is before Evil Dead Two, not before Evil Dead, but Evil Dead right. Two. So there you Absolutely. go, kind of kind of a same idea here. Um, so, uh, wow, again, just. <laughs> <laughs> the but, stuff you see in this movie. So what about what about when when she's up in the shackles and uh, and and the things start coming out of the resonator and uh, and Doctor Pretorius is like, you hear that sound, Princess? Those are the shrieking eels. Remember that part? <laughs> I don't think I do. So, <laughs> oh. Elming. Elming. <laughs> but how about just just as ridiculous as the fact that she can move her wrist and they will bite the, the straps on her arm instead of biting her wrist and she gets free that that's something yeah <laughs> i you know the only thing i've got after this as far as a, a um, an observation was gross finale oh yeah yeah, yeah. so everything's just gross <clears throat> what happens is pretorius just, turns into a uh he turns into a howling two werewolf bat looking thing, a la Evil Dead Two Henrietta again. Yeah, because he's got the wings. Yeah, comes down, rips off Jeffrey Combs' head, just like what happened to Pretorius at the first of the movie. Yep. And now Jeffrey Combs' spirit, I guess, is inside of Pretorius, and they have yeah. an inner battle. And you got parts where. Yeah, you know, Pretorius be busting open and Jeffrey Combs' head will stick out and he's got his hair back. Right. And they then they start inner fighting and it just turns into a big bowl of jello. And then there's a big explosion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then there's a big explosion. It's a big you know, anaconda like wraps around the house and it implodes. <laughs> the sausage legs. <laughs> sausage um, leg McGee's. <laughs> Yeah, so here comes those sausage legs. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know where Barbara Crampton got this bomb, but she did. Yeah. And uh, you know, the, the whole thing, you know, the, the timer was set for an inordinately amount long for the fact that she was just gonna run out the door. Right. She set the timer for like 15 minutes or something. <laughs> um and then uh, you know, so so they're so they do this big fight and then boom, yeah. the resonator is exploded. She jumps out the window, the same one's been busted out three times. Right. Lands on the okay. ground. And the neighbors, well, she's broke her leg. It's pretty nasty looking. It's like right at the knee. It's like all mangled. I thought it was just leftover jello. <laughs> Didn't really look but okay. But how about the scene though? And I have to give them this because her going from the insanity to you know, crying and screaming into the laugh. Yeah. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, you know, I I give credit to the actress for that one because, yeah. like, you know, just like Jeffrey Combs, it was a matter of, and then I do what? Okay. <laughs> I do what? <laughs> That's right. It was the it was the crazy dog finale. Crazy dog finale. Every movie needs one. <laughs> Every movie. But no, I mean, it was it was one hundred percent unhinged. Yes, she did a great job. Yeah, that's pretty much that describes this whole movie. It's pretty unhinged, man. Uh, I feel like you're gonna see things you haven't really seen anywhere else, but you'll see derivatives of where people have taken some ideas. Yeah. Uh, if you admire again the thing, the effects of the thing, I'm not saying it's as good as the thing, but I tell you what, it's pretty dang good. It, you know, it it could have ranged farther than it did, and it would have been a mistake. But I think that as far like I said, the one, two, three, yeah, you know, yeah. you've got the preface of what happened in the Pretorius house. You've got him going back to redo the experiment with uh, with the new psychologist, and then you've got 
him returning with the uh, with the monster dome where you know he and Pretorius have this showdown and Barbara Crampton, you know, takes matters into her own hands. It's a good one, two, three. You yep. know, there isn't yep. a whole lot of wasted plot. Right. So there you go, folks. For your holiday holiday season, your Halloween season, check out from beyond. Throw it on there. Check it out. Punch I don't think movie. Don't think you'll be uh, disappointed, man. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this movie, and you should be too. Yeah. Don't try and eat anything while you're watching it. <laughs> All right, folks, I believe that's it. You got anything else, man? Nope, nope. I'm good. All right. Then, folks, happy Halloween. We will check you later. Adios.